Hi, it's Mark Zinkowitz, and welcome to the German Nation podcast. I am in Banff for the 2023 Prairie Grain Development Committee meetings, and I sat down with Marta Isidorczyk. She is chair of the Prairie Recommending Committee for Oats and Barley. I wanted to know what's on the committee's agenda this year, why she wanted to be the new chairperson for the committee, and why she chose food science as a career. Enjoy our chat. For our listeners' uh, benefit, uh, we're here in Banff for the 2023 Prairie Grain Development Committee meeting and you are the chairperson for the Prairie Recommending Committee for Oats and Barley, or the Per Cob for short. Correct. And you took over about, about a year ago. Correct, I took over a year ago from our previous chair, Dr. Kelly Turkington. So I'm new in this role. So. What, what, made you, what made you want to be chairperson for the committee. I'm sure you have a lot on your plate. You're very busy. You're involved in many different things. What? what? Well, I have been involved with uh, uh, PGDC and uh, Prairie Recommending Committee for Oats and Barley for many years. So I think that I am relatively familiar <laughs> with the system, with all the rules, and uh, because we have such an important role uh, to play in, you know, for our barley and oat industry. Um, I think it's it's good to kind of you know pay back. I learn a lot over these years, and so if now I can help um, somehow, it, it's it's a good role to have. What's important this year for the committee? You know, when, when you think of oats and barley, and, and what's what are the big issues that you're talking about in your meetings? I know you you go over a lot of data, a lot of spreadsheets, a lot of very technical things, but but when the really big burning issues that everybody is interested in, concerned about this year. What are a few of those things? Well, first of all, I think this year is um, somewhat unusual. We have an unprecedented number of lines that are being proposed for registration. We have six oat lines and 12 barley lines. Uh, but it's not only the number, it's, it's also a type of the lines that we have. We have quite unique lines this year. Um, there, there are two uh, hullless food barley lines that are being proposed for registration and both have a quite unique characteristic. One line is uh, hullless barley with uh, a, a dark color, so it's a black barley. Uh, it still has you know, very high uh, content of beta-glucans, which is good for, for nutrition, human nutrition. Um, and also because of this uh, specific color, um, there is a you know, great possibility that this line will have some antioxidant properties. So this is definitely you know, adding to the nutritional value of that line. The other line, uh, Halles, it's also Halles Barley, um, this line contains very high content of beta-glucans. So far, uh, one of the line, high beta-glucan food line was CDC fiber with beta-glucan content somewhere between nine, 9 and 10 percent. Well, this line will, if it's going to be recommended and registered, it's going to replace this line. It contains even higher amount of beta-glucans. And beta-glucans is this functional component in food barley because it is associated with health benefits of, of this particular grain. And uh, uh, food products uh, which uh, contain barley and specific amount of these beta glucans, they can carry health claims because beta glucans are associated with uh, prevention and treatment of um, um, heart diseases, uh, lowering cholesterol, uh, as well as some other um, health benefits. They also carry some other health benefits. So, this is very exciting. The other two lines that are being proposed uh, for um, support for registration are also two hullless barley lines, but these lines are actually for malting purposes. So the last time that we registered hullless barley for malting was 10 years ago, in 2013. It was the variety CBC Clear. 
So these two lines obviously are bringing a lot of uh, benefits and, and better trades compared to CDC Clear. So we will see how um, how the industry will react and who, what kind of you know support this line will get for for registrations. But I think that uh, a lot of people are quite excited about uh, Hales Barley uh, for malting. Uh, has not been really very popular so far, but uh, uh, these lines can they bring certain benefits, the higher extract. Uh, there is also possibility that because of they don't have any hulls, that the, they can bring um, that the taste of of beer may be a little bit different. Uh, then also the breweries uh, don't have to worry about the spent grain because there is no spent grain, there is no hulls. So there is a lot of uh, um, potential advantages. Uh, the other lines that are brought for uh, support for registration uh, are also also have some unique traits. They are two lines which are uh, GN. Um, no, they don't produce any glycosidic nitrile. The glycosidic nitrile in malt um, is a precursor of uh, um, a compound which is recognized as kind of uh, um, carcinogenic. And this is especially in whiskey production during the distillation. So established distilling uh, industry, they normally use, they like to use uh, barley that, that will not produce this glycosidic nitrile. So we have this time we have uh, two lines. They, of course, you know, these lines can also be used for, for malting. We don't worry about glycosidic nitrile if barley is used for malting and production of beer, but it is more important, especially for the distilling industry. All of the other lines that are also uh, being brought forward are, are they, they all bring some uh, um, unusual benefits, whether it's uh, agronomy, higher yield, uh, resistance to lodging, shorter maturity, or some kind of a disease resistance package. All of these lines, uh, oats and, and the other lines are, are also, um, will bring some some benefits and uh, in terms of, you know, some traits and merits. It's, it seems like a lot of the varieties, and then this is a theme I run into at PGDC a lot, is, is they have qualities that are important to the, the end users, be it, mm -hmm. Uh, brewers, distillers, food manufacturers, mm -hmm. these these have qualities that directly appeal to to the manufacturers and, and as a result yeah. to to the consumers as well. Yes, that's that's correct. But at the same time, you know, we are also uh, very um, aware that that uh, the lines that we are bringing are also bring some benefits to the producers in terms of higher yield and uh, uh, they are easier ma maybe to manage in terms of, you know, if they have uh, um, resistance to, to certain diseases, then, um, you know, this obviously helps with uh, obtaining, you know, higher yield using less chemicals and so on. So this is also very important. Has there been any discussion at the committee about regulatory matters? The, the plenary session tomorrow is focused very heavily on regulatory system, variety registration, all these things. And has that has that come up at all? Are, are, there, are there any any regulatory issues that, that you guys are discussing that, that maybe, you know, if we change this, we might be able to, to have more innovation in oats and barley, anything like that? Well, I'm looking forward to the discussion tomorrow, to the plenary session. There is going to be um, the topic of national registration versus regional registration. I'm just uh, hoping that uh, we will be able to, you know, improve our system and develop ways uh, that uh, the recommending committees uh, for the same crop, but in different regions, whether it's in Eastern Canada or Western Canada, can work uh, uh, cooperatively together. Um, uh, I think, you know, in recent uh, years, we observed that uh, there is some interest on the prairies to grow uh, varieties that have been developed in Eastern Canada and recommended for registration. Uh, this variety, we observed that uh, uh, producers are interested in growing uh, some of these varieties in, in Western Canada on the prairies. 
However, we don't really have enough information, especially about the uh, disease resistance of these uh, varieties. So last year, uh, as a kind of proactive measure, uh, PERCOP established a special Prairie Eastern Barley Disease Evaluation Trial, which is uh, coordinated by the uh, disease evaluation team of, of PERCOP. So um, that uh, special trial was established to fill the gap, to provide that information about the disease resistance uh, to, to this uh, Eastern lines. Um, the information uh, uh, is going to be used uh, in the provincial uh, seed guides or provincial variety guides, because uh, so far we were not able to provide that information uh, to the producers. Yeah, I just did a webinar with uh, Mitchell Jap was on it mm -hmm. and talking about that project and its mm -hmm. usefulness in in the seed guides, bringing that information to producers and really taking that that seed guide information to the next level, so to speak. So that's really mm -hmm. exciting. Yes. So um, we are looking forward on Thursday during our PERCOP meeting, Dr. Uh, Kelly Turkington, who is coordinator of the Eastern uh, Disease uh, Trial, is going to report uh, uh, the information that was gathered uh, last year. Hmm. It's very exciting. Yeah, it, it's there's so many there's so many facets to this, and, and it's not a a simple topic. But but I mean, you're no stranger to these things. I mean, your research program. And this is a mouthful aims at understanding and gaining control over mechanisms responsible for technological performance and functionality of carbohydrate polymers from barley and other economically important prairie grains in complex food systems. Yes. That's a mouthful. Yes. I'm not even going to pretend to understand what that means. Can you boil that down for us exactly what you study and the significance of it to the plant breeding world? Yes, so the objective of my research program is to identify physical grain characteristics or grain constituents that affect the end use quality. And the grain can be used in food products, it can be used in bread, in pasta, it can be used to make beer. So all of these food systems are complex food systems and there will be different uh, constituents or physical characteristics that relate to this end use quality. So for example, I already mentioned beta-glucans. So beta-glucans in food barley are very important. We want to have the high content of beta-glucans because it improves the nutritional value of that food. In malting barley, it's actually quite opposite. Beta-glucans uh, interfere with the uh, um, malting process with the brewing process. So in fact, in malting barley, uh, the breeders are making all the efforts to lower the concentration of, of beta-glucans. So this is what my program is about. So I'm looking at either constituents or physical grain characteristics. This could be grain density, it could be the size of the grain, it could be the shape of the grain, how this will affect the end use quality. And, and this will differ depending whether the grain is used in food systems such as bread, pasta, pita bread, or in beer. What, what made you want to study this? What, what was it that first got you interested in, in making this your career? Yeah, so food science, I'm a food scientist. I graduated actually from food science department at the University of Manitoba. And food science is an applied science. It kind of combines various aspects of food chemistry, uh, physics, microbiology, nutrition, sensory analysis, analysis, and I suppose that's what that's what I like that that it's uh, uh, it it kind of you know comprises this this different uh, subject. So uh, that's very interesting. I'm my first degree was in chemistry, and then. Uh, and then you know this my knowledge in chemistry can be used in the food system so that's very interesting in my opinion it's an applied science food science is applied science so it's applied to the real food system and i'm always interested in whether it's the um, physical characteristics of the food 
uh, whether it's sensory uh, characteristics or, or nutrition, um, it, it has always been the, of interest to me. You probably learn something different every day, I would think. Yes, <laughs> we, we seem to discover and uh, confirm that certain grain physical characteristics or, or constituents do play a role in, in the end use quality and affect either processing or the final product. Thank you so much for sitting down with me. Well, thank you for your interest and for inviting me. For more great podcasts, visit germination.ca.